My name is Bill Socha, and I'm president of Socha Management. Since uh, actually the late 50s, we were primarily a building company. The name was Walter J. Socha Builders, Inc. And about five years ago, we started to focus more on managing the property that we built, so we changed our name to Socha Management. Uh, currently, though, we are back up to building a large building and you know have exposure in and around the scaffold law with a 60,000 square foot uh, mixed-use building that we're doing right now. We here at Socha Management have 12 employees. It's actually a pretty small crew that, that manages all our property. But currently on the uh, construction of the mixed-use building, I mean, there's somewhere between 50 to 75, you know, contractors out there at any time uh, building that building. I am familiar with the scaffolding law. I mean, those of us, you know, um, Basically, I consider ourselves a small business. I don't think any of us can can go through our our years of business without knowing a little about it because we're you know we're impacted by it. We had hired a roofing contractor to put a new roof on one of our commercial buildings, and it's an asphalt, you know, sloped roof, and. Um, one of the days, uh, he had uh, a worker, a, an employee who hadn't worked for him for a few weeks, uh, show up on the job site looking to see if there was any work for him. And unfortunately, he happened to also be somebody that, um, you know, had drug use in his history. And, and, you know, us lay people would say, you know, he was high when he showed up and he was asking for the, the owner of the company. and. Uh, the construction, uh, the employees there at the time said, stay down on the ground, we'll have the owner come down. Well, when they turned their backs, he went up on the ladder, went up on the roof, walked down the other side, and then jumped off. And he sustained, obviously, injuries from the fall, landing on his feet, and, and those kinds of injuries. There were witnesses that saw all of this, and he ended up, you know, suing uh, through workman's comp and through a you know a lawsuit um, that we ended up as the owner getting you know caught up in it, it impacted us greatly because that was the third incident that I said kicked us in where no one would insurance so our rates went up some substantially going through the New York State Insurance Fund the other thing is after that we were recommended by our insurance agents and our attorneys to really tighten up our insurance requirements that we request from our subcontractors. And what was really sad to me is that we had a lot of small business people, like wallpaper hangers, cleaners, um, electricians, plumbers, that have done business with us for you know, 30 years, that they could no longer meet the requirements that we were being advised we had to have. So what has happened is you know, some of the small local subcontractors we can no longer do business with. And that has also increased our costs because now you have to look for contractors that have that much higher insurance you know, uh, coverage, which of course we're gonna pay more. So it ultimately, you know, we're in the business too of prop, you know, renting property. So where does that cost go? Obviously it gets passed on to our tenants. So there's a connection where actually the people that rent, you know, hundreds of apartments from us end up getting their rents raised ultimately because of the, you know, the high cost of insurance. You know, as a small business person, we're family run, you know, we work a lot of hours. We love, fortunately, we love what we do, but it's just tough sometimes when this kind of stuff just keeps coming at you, you know, whether it's other government regulation or you know this situation that just at times you know you question do I really want to be doing this the one do I want to be doing the business or two do I want to be doing it in New York State